I... I... I was expecting... Uh... Like, a big bad to, you know, suddenly show up and be like, ah, there's one final mission type of deal. Because, like, I just... Like, it, it felt like they were leaning into that just a tiny, tiny amount. Uh... But, I guess... Yes, that wasn't it. Did I did I get all the characters? I think all the characters on this screen are ones that I recruited. So maybe you can't recruit those uh, those one characters, or maybe they're just showing the characters that I recruited. Because looks like there's plenty of room to put more people. No Faust farewells though. Yeah, very disappointing. Um, all right, Dark Deity has been conquered. Uh, just some initial thoughts that I'll forget because I didn't write them down because, you know, didn't know how the end was going to play out. But, uh, I don't know why this game is called Dark Deity. Uh, I, I was expecting to come up, like, I was expecting to fight a god or something like that. Or somebody becomes a dark god. And, you know, I guess there was a path to that. Uh, but... Um, yeah, I, I was expecting uh, Koli Sumai to show up and be like, you know what, I'm actually the big bad up here, you know, I put all this into motion and, you know, we gotta fight. I was expecting something like that. Wow. Y'all shouting out Discord moderators in your credits. That's crazy. That's crazy. He's in the middle of the scene, though, like the MP MVP he is. Faust is pretty amazing. Absolutely amazing. Uh, so, with Dark Deity conquered, uh, gotta mention that this was a viewer-requested game, and Cyanesis was the person that requested it. So, thank you very much, Cyanesis, for the recommendation. Uh, for my overall thoughts of this game, uh, I kind of... I have a specific outlook on this game where uh, I think the game is fine, but I I also think that the game is uh, it it has an approach to doing things that I think, from my point of view, and this is gonna sound disrespectful. Uh, but from my point of view, I think I'm going to use the word misguided, but maybe the more correct way to approach it is, um, uh, like could have taken a different path. Um, I, I, I think the, the overall gameplay of the game is, is pretty fun. Like if. If you've seen me play any of the recent uh, Fire Emblem games, like, I have a really hard time getting, um, I don't want to say invested, but, like, getting interested in playing a Fire Emblem game. But once I start playing it, it's fun. And this game, to me, does a similar thing. Uh, and that's primarily because for a lot of intents and purposes, this is a Fire Emblem game. Um, it alters a few things. It uh, does things um, with a slightly different approach here and there. But it is, for the most part, a Fire Emblem game. But also not a Fire Emblem game, which I'll, I'll elaborate on later. So... Uh, it's it's kind of tough for me. I, I I think overall, I I enjoyed um, the gameplay when when it was working the way it was supposed to. I suppose, which was the vast majority of the time. Um, but I think overall, I you know. The game was okay for, for me, uh, I suppose. 
Uh, for the story, was it satisfying? Uh, I'm going to kind of say no here. Um, the, there's, there's a lot of leaps and bounds being made in the story. There's a lot of... Um, uh, latching on to things that aren't important and it, it kind of like those things they kind of like force it to be important I know that's that's a weird thing to say you know oh the game developers are writing this thing and it's being forced you know like well how else are they going to do it but um, you know like the things with the staff it just it didn't make any sense why we would research this thing um, yeah, I didn't feel like it was explained very well. Um, when we decided to go across the sea, it didn't really make much sense. And I don't feel like they explained it very well. Um, when we, uh, left Red Hill, I feel like it didn't make much sense. And they didn't explain it very well. Um, it, it just... I, I don't want to use the word contrived, but it had similar invokings to that, I guess, um, where because they didn't explain it enough or or let those characters actually convey their their reasonings for wanting to do this, uh, despite all of the consequences. It, it didn't feel fleshed out enough and it just felt the way it did. Uh, did it feel complete? I suppose it does. I don't think there's anything lingering that I can think of. Uh, other than the, you know, the entire start of the war. Um, uh, you know, like I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, I don't think we ever learned who killed Varric's father, unless it was Empyrean, but I don't think they explicitly say that. Uh, how was the pacing? I think the pacing is relatively good, you know? There's there's some filler uh, chapters and whatnot um, that could have certainly been used to um, flesh out motivations and things like that uh, better, but... You know, for the most part, I would say the pacing is fine. Uh, for thoughts on the story, uh, I like the dynamics. Uh, when we were drafted and ignored orders to kill some bandits, added a nice bit of tension, especially after uh, we had to work to get back in the king's good graces. Uh, this was one of uh, the more enjoyable parts of the game for me, which is effectively the very beginning. Um, because, you know, typically you don't play games where you get to defy the king's orders and then uh, try to build up your build your reputation back. And I I really wished that they they played on that more because it was uh, a really nice part of the game and and it kind of brought out the characters just a little bit more. Uh, but I, I guess to add on to this, that to me felt like the more interesting story thread to to go down rather than the, uh, the you know, there's a necromancer running around, but, you know, it, it's fine. It's fine. It, it is what it is. Uh, effectively immediately after that, the game goes off the deep end. We go to save Red Hill, uh, and when losing that, uh, that battle, we're saved by Sarah's crew. They, in turn, ask us to become deserters to, uh, to the only home we've ever known, work with people we just met, um, or, and work with people we just met. Uh, all we've base, or all we're basically told is one of their scouts made a breakthrough and that a large force needs to be there to meet him. This was all it took for people who have been training in, the, in an academy for a large portion of their lives to become soldiers for their kingdom uh, to betray literally everything. Uh, this was one of the more crazier parts for me 
and uh, one of the moments where I knew, like, okay, you know, there's there's a chance that uh, we might not get the the answers that I I'm hoping to get out of this game because they they rushed this one, um, and it didn't it just didn't work for me. Uh, you know, you didn't convince me. You know, if if I was Irving, I would be like, are you insane? You want me to go all the way over there and abandon my people so that I can help you out on a rumor? Like, you need to give me so much more than that. You know, it it's 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 silly. Uh, when we actually take action on this scout's intel, it effectively was a dead end, and that sends us on another wild goose chase to a temple uh, we think could be targeted by the necromancer. Uh, so claims Arima. Uh, there we find Vesta, who just so happens to be part of a secret organization involving the eternal aspects. From there, she wants us to cross the sea because Arima told her everything about the Necromancer and the Eternal Aspects. Uh, this is, once again, another crazy leap. And I feel like, uh, I don't know if I have it in here, but Lincoln is the voice of reason in this game. Um, unfortunately, he just doesn't have the backbone to be like, you guys are insane. What the heck are you doing? Because he goes as far to say, this is crazy. Uh, you know, what are you, what are you doing? But then he's like, oh, well, you know, if you want to do it, you know, it's up to you. Um, and, you know, if, if you're going to play it that way, you might as well just not say anything. Uh, I want to note that we know very little about the Necromancer at this point in the game, namely that he can raise the dead, teleport long distances, and was asking for a large amethyst before attacking us. Uh, why is this information valuable or worth betraying your kingdom for? An another thing where I, I don't think the motivation and the the uh, the information does not justify the actions that we take. Uh, then, after being convinced to go across the sea, we make our way towards the port and see a suspicious magical thing. For whatever reason, Irving is convinced this mysterious thing uh, with a person inside is extremely bad and we find Aramor and Delia soldiers just so that we can investigate. In doing so, we meet back up with Sterling, force a temporary truce to stop this mysterious magic thing. Less than 30 seconds later, the screen fades to pink and Sterling dies. The disappointment in this execution was great. Uh, absolutely monumental is probably what I should have said there. Um, I... I think there are pivotal pivotal moments in this game that don't get the uh, the like they they uh, they need more time in the oven, I guess. Um, not in the sense of like you know they need to spend more time working on it, but like it act like they need to draw it out more. Um, you know, uh, the the death of Sterling is kind of a big deal. You know, that's that's the main character's brother. You know, we should we should make that into a big event, and then have events that cascade off of it. Shouldn't just be a like a one and done thirty second thing. Uh, it it doesn't make any sense to do it that way, but. That's how it was done. Uh, for gameplay mechanics and design, what gameplay I'm on stand out? Uh, this game is rough around the edges uh, in a great many places, um, or, or some places, depending on where you look. Uh, UI, UI navigation with the controller, uh, available options, and sound level variability. Uh, these are all um, uh, things that aren't as as clean when playing the game uh, game doesn't teach you how to play it instead gives you an optional tutorial menu that can be read unfortunately it introduces terminology and other aspects that might not be defined elsewhere 
So there are just other aspects of the game that could use more explanation, but don't necessarily, or aren't necessarily, like the game doesn't teach you how to play. It, 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 it expects you to know how to play a tactics game and in turn a Fire Emblem game. And I think there's value in having, uh, this guy's name is Checking Noob. I, I know what that, that is from. Uh, uh, there's value in having a tutorial that conveys the type of tactics game that you're playing because a Fire Emblem tactics game is very, very different from a Tactics Ogre tactics game or a Mercenary Saga um, or uh, what other tactics games out? You know, like, y'all you know, know. There's, there's tons of tactics games out there and there's different ways to play those tactics games. And so I, just assuming that the player knows how to approach this game is is probably not the way to go in, in my opinion uh how do you feel when people pick games but aren't here while you play it uh, i don't i don't care about that you know would i love for the person to have been around sure does it really make that much of a difference to me not really you know uh Hey, people have lives and all that. Is that because Tactics Ogre is blah? Mages, ew? All right. All right, Crayson, you need to calm down. All right, just because you didn't know how to use mages in that game doesn't mean that the mages weren't good. All right? You just got to put more, more time and effort into it. You know, don't just toss them aside. Come on. Uh... Turning off combat animations also means turning off the ability to see which units are taking damage. Uh, this was uh, uh, a little jarring for me. Um, I, after a while, I turned off combat animations because um, that's you know typically what I do when it comes to Fire Emblem style games. You know the. The combat animations just take up more time. And, you know, once you've seen uh, a, a good chunk of them, or in this game, like once you've seen, you know, a, a decent portion, because there's actually quite a few uh, animations in this game, which are really nice, by the way. Um, you know, you, you don't need to see them again. The, the downs, like the huge downside is that when you turn off the animations, you don't know what's going on. And so like characters are taking damage at the very edge of the screen and you have no idea what character is taking damage unless you see for the uh, few milliseconds that you may have that their bar moved before uh, the all the enemies get wiped off off the map and you see the experience bar. And, you, and the experience bar doesn't tell you anything, you know? Other than, you know, how much experience a unit is getting. So um, it's it's a very weird thing. Um, I, I don't think it's a choice. I just think it's something that exists in the game. And and I maybe maybe nobody thought like. Uh, nobody thought about it, I guess. Um, The experience bar removes. Uh, all units on the map from visibility until the bar goes away. I just went over that. Uh, when having enemy range selected, it is not visible when moving an allied unit. Uh, this one, this one is actually a big deal for me. Um, if if I select an enemy so that I can see their attack range, when I then go to move a unit. I should still see their attack range so that I know where to move. But the way this game handles it is like if you think layers, there's the enemy attack range. And then when you select a unit to move, that unit's movement area covers over the enemy's attack range. So you have to um, 
complete the next step of the unit's movement, which is selecting a square for their movement to go away so that you can see where it's at. And it's it, it doesn't feel good to, to interact with that. Uh, when a unit reaches a promotion level, the promotion happens immediately while on the map. You can't back out of it uh, to choose later, review the composition of your other units, or even review the battlefield. Uh, this, this is, um, something I'll get into later is, like, how fire, like, Fire Emblem games approach things from certain ways, and I think this game approaches things in the same ways that Fire Emblem games do, and I think it's interesting. It's an interesting choice, like, legitimately interesting to have that unit level up immediately in the battle and be able to choose what you want from that character. The huge downside is that when you first get the opportunity to level up a character, at least from, from my experience, it was at the very beginning portion of a chapter and I had never seen this screen before. I had no idea why this screen was on on the the like it why it showed up and it was for characters that i uh had interacted with but didn't know they were joining my party or anything like that so i'm making decisions that you know they seem interesting but i don't actually get to interact with the rest of the systems that would inform my choice and i feel that's incredibly important for any tactics game is you need to have the information to make decisions and when those things don't connect it, it, it's it's not a good experience um uh, I would probably describe myself as a laugh and move on type of person when it comes to bugs, and there's been a few of those in the game, but there's also been some that get to me. Uh, Irving's hair being red after it's supposed to be black and red, a fun goof that we move on from, you know, easy. Uh, enemy uh, and or allied units showing up in one square, but are secretly in another square not so fun to experience um this this bug actually uh like at first it happened every so often and it wasn't very uh common uh towards the second half of the game i feel like it was happening on like every map effectively and uh there are some moments where it's just like, oh, okay, you know, this is not that big of a deal. You know, I'll just navigate around it. There are other moments where it's like, this ruins my entire strategy. And, uh, I like, how do I, how do I fix this? Or I can't fix this. Now I have to suffer the consequences for it. And, you know, typically that's how bugs interact with games and stuff like that. Um, but I'll also add, this is not, not fair to the developers, but I'll also add this game came out uh, several years ago. I feel like somebody had to have reported this bug a long time ago. No idea if they, you know, just can't find the... the uh, the cause of it maybe it's a really tough bug to find out you know maybe nobody's reported it you know who knows um i maybe i'm the first person to come across this bug and it's just been so consistent for me i have no idea uh but it's it's uh it's added a lot of obnoxiousness and frustration to what otherwise uh didn't have to be a thing and, uh, thank you very much for the five gifted subs, Krayson. My goodness. My goodness. Um, another, uh, bug 
is uh, making decisions, sometimes irreversible, like class promotions based on the information displayed, only for certain abilities or mechanics to say something completely different after choosing them and viewing them in a different menu. Very frustrating. Um, so this happened... Uh, one of the eternal aspects, when I viewed it in one menu, um, like to equip it, it said, you know, we do X. But then when I view it, when it's already equipped on the like character screen and I hover over it, it said something completely different. And for an aspect, it's not that big of a deal. It's like, okay, you know, this is actually, it does something else. The, the, the downside to that though, is that you'll always see the incorrect text when you initially go to equip it. And so you always have to go to the character screen to then see what it does and then make that decision to move it to somewhere else. Um, but the more egregious issue is that uh, if you're promoting a class or a character to a new class and the only information that you have available to you to access is the information on the screen to choose a class that you cannot undo and have and the the abilities that you chose are completely different after you've made the decision that to me is 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 peak frustration <laughs> because I I don't think it I, I can't recall if it was a like a scenario where um, I would have made a different decision but it certainly would have influenced uh, other decisions to choose something different um, and you know it, it it's just frustrating there was also the bug where your character got teleported to a square when you couldn't move. Oh yeah, well that one's kind of tied to uh, um, enemy or allies units showing in one square but are secretly in another square. But yeah, there there is also the issue that uh, <laughs> uh, sometimes uh, as a result of that, you can't move characters or do certain actions with them and they're all it's also kind of weird because they're technically in both squares it's 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 a it's a bug that has multiple problems with it is i guess the uh the correct thing to say um continuing uh leaving the rough around the edges part Moving on to other stuff. Uh, unfortunately, I think this game feels like it takes too much from Fire Emblem without carving in enough of its own ideas. The visual style, combat sequence, unit types, unit promotions, unit stats, unit level up style, experience gain, unit animations, etc. Um, all of these things take after uh, Fire Emblem. And I think every single one of these things has uh, pros and cons to how they're utilized. And I don't think Dark Deity uh, takes what doesn't, like what can be improved upon for Fire Emblem and then improves upon them for their game. I feel like from my perspective, it feels like they wanted to make a Fire Emblem game or a game that's like Fire Emblem. And so uh, they they implemented a lot of things that are um, core to the the, the stylistic um, like view of, of Fire Emblem. Um, uh, old, older Fire Emblems, you know, like Sacred Stones, Shadow Dragon, etc. And uh, that 
that has its its own issues, I guess, which I'm getting into, I suppose. Uh, there are alterations, such as different armor types, weapons not having durability, being able to uh, see a unit's disadvantage, upgrading weapons, aptitudes being visible, characters get permanent wounds instead of dying, etc. There are uh, uh, alterations, but I don't think there's necessarily changes. Um, having different armor types and weapons so that uh, certain weapons do less damage than other weapons depending on what armor type you're hitting. I don't necessarily think that this is uh, much different than just adding or like than just Fire Emblem having multiple weapons and using them against certain enemies that are have certain resistances like it's just um uh there's there's a certain way i want to convey it but like it's just um it's it's taking something that's already existing and and i, I don't know y'all y'all know what i mean you know it's taking something that's already uh, existing and you know doing the same thing with it i guess just it it looks different it, it doesn't function any any different effectively but it looks different um let's see uh being unable to inspect enemies before committing to a map is disappointing and I have a footnote here. This is mostly false, but sometimes uh, still uh, a thing such as the dragon could be a bug. Um, I actually think there, I, I probably could have inspected the dragon and I just uh, didn't press the right button. Uh, I, I don't have confirmation on that, but uh, I, I'm gonna say that this was a goof on my part and I just left it in my thoughts to let you know that sometimes I goof on my thoughts too. Uh, no, it was like, I like you better over here, and then you got TP'd to a square uh, that you officially can't even use. Oh yeah, yeah, there there was uh, a couple of those. The, that Those ones were super rare. I think those only happened like two, maybe three times, but there were, there were a couple of occasions where uh, a unit <laughs> would like move into an area that you can't even move into, uh, and you know, I have no idea how they even got over there. Remember the like, uh, the mushroom crystal cave map or something specifically? I'm I'm guessing uh, I, that's not the map that I'm thinking of, but I, what I think you're referring to is me teleporting um, that character over there, which was also kind of weird because, you know, you can't move over there as far as I know. So uh, being able to teleport um, or phase somebody over there was also a strange thing. Um, the presumed level 20 promotions are hidden. Uh, these are level 30 promotions, uh, we now know. Uh, meaning you can't make a choice dependent on a decision you would like to make later down the line. So this is another thing that I feel like like Fire Emblem kind of uh, approaches it this way. Although I think in the newer Fire Emblems, they don't do this. Um, or, I don't know. Uh, what, I'll, what I'll say is, is that uh, when you go to make a choice and you only see the next thing in front of you, you can only make the choice based off of that and the information that you already have. Um, but you know what's more fun than that? Seeing all the choices that you can make over the course of the entire game and then planning out where you wanna go one, once you're given the ability to start making choices. You know, um, maybe I want my character to get this particular ability so that it combos with another ability Later down the line, we actually got through those credits. That's crazy. I thought we were going to be here all night with those credits. You know, Kickstarter, backers, and, you know, who knows what else could have been in there. Um, 
I I like the planning aspect of of uh, of that that type of thing. It's so much more fun to be able to make your choices when you're informed. And the game informing you by telling you this is what this character can do later down the line. Uh, you know, sneak peek kind of thing. Uh, it's nice. Uh, but, you know, you can't do that here. Um, I'm going to... Uh, reduce the music... Oh, here we go again. I'm going to reduce the music volume here because it, get, it gets kind of crazy. And, you know, we're, we're wrapping up anyways. Um, moving on, moving on. I don't think I'm a fan of class abilities giving experience. It can disrupt the play style of a map where players may feel the necessity to maximize its usage. Uh, it's also much stronger on abilities that can be used on allies. Abilities like chain or disarm are much more difficult to take advantage of. Uh, this is a like a, a play style type of thing. Um, there are instances when you like when I play this played this game, there are instances where I could move a unit to um, a more advantageous position uh, in the sense of they would be further along the map and that that extra distance could then cascade into giving them more distance later on, you know, affecting the map in other ways, yada, yada, this and that. But there were times where it felt too compelling to instead make another decision of I'm going to instead use this ally to use their like special ability so that they can get experience. And I think that I think it adds an interesting dynamic, but I think it just throws throws the general gist of like how you should probably play the tactics game because you're focusing on getting like min maxing uh the experience gains because you have these abilities and then it's it's thrown out of whack because some characters such as the chain or the disarm uh abilities like you can only use those on enemies and to take advantage of those is significantly more difficult and and even less rewarding all things considered um so i i personally would have much rather see no experience for those abilities and instead they're just purely utility and it gets rid of that that extra mindset of like oh i can just sit on this map for 60 turns and level my characters up to 50, you know, on chapter five. Um, which you probably can't do. I, there, there does seem to be like a, like a band or a, a weight uh, in terms of like levels or who you're casting it on or something like that. Cause I remember um, Fenton got like one experience for pushing somebody, um, but uh, you know, never really got to test that to a large degree. <sighs> uh, for combat, combat, you know, other than the things that I have described, combat uh, was fairly enjoyable for me. Um, I, I enjoyed the bosses, although I don't think the bosses uh, were particularly challenging. Uh, which, you know, for me is, is a great thing because, you know, I don't like to be challenged. Um, but uh, there maybe there could have been a little bit more variety with uh, the bosses to uh, make them more threatening, I suppose. Uh, they had some unique abilities, which was very cool. Uh, but in terms of like action economy... I, I think having less HP and and more more interactivity with maybe the map or uh, how their attacks work and things like that uh, would have been more interesting to me because 
all in all, like, the dragon boss was kind of similar to the Empyrean boss, except Empyrean got to move and, you know, had more of that interact. The Empyrean boss is actually a pretty good example of how I would like to see other bosses go. Not necessarily, you know, doing the exact same thing, but like there were crystals on the map and those crystals did things. And if you killed those crystals, the boss no longer had access to those things. So uh, that's, that, that's a cool design approach to take for a boss. And I think they could have uh, taken similar approaches of uh, having cool things that the boss does or cool things on the map that you can interact with that also interact with the boss. Uh, for Cardinal Sins, there's no Cardinal Sins that I'm aware of. And yeah, we're going to say no. Uh, for Miscellaneous Sound and Music, uh, going to be adding this one to level up this playlist. You know, there's there's at least, at least one track uh, that I'm excited for. And uh, uh, I'm sure there's there's a few more on there that that uh, I can I get to listen to. Uh, for voice acting, this game had a uh, very little voice acting. You know, it had the like the fire emblem, you know, like quips and things like that. Um, but I didn't have any issues with the voice acting. I thought it was fine. Uh, for graphics, I think that a lot of the visuals in this game are really really good. Um, the the sprite work in in combat are really well done. Um, the fact that every class has four different attacks and each one of those attacks has a different animation and that when they crit, those attacks are also altered um, to like a different color or whatever, you know, like they're effectively different, but not completely different. Like that's, that's just so cool to me. It's absolutely cool to me. There's... There's a uh, one, three, four, eight, eight classes. How, how do I, how do I explain this? There's a, uh, let's see, there's, there's the mage, there's the soldier, there's the thief, there's the priest, there's the adept. So there's like five classes, and each one of those classes has, uh, I think, seven promotions. And as far as I know, at least seven of those promotions per class, maybe not the base class has different stuff, but uh, as far as I know, the promotion stuff has different uh interactions with everything it may maybe i'm just thinking of the mages regardless there's some great sprite work and great animation and uh, great visuals in this game and the graphics are 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 very nice um for other is the game worth recommending mm. this this is where it gets kind of tough. Okay. Um, and I think I'm going to answer this question uh, in the next section. So I'll just say, uh, you know, uh, stay tuned or immediately right now. Uh, if the developer is watching, uh, I think it's fine to want to take a heavy inspiration from a game or series, but uh, you also have to carve out your own spot with the game. If you don't, you're confronted with the question, why would I play Dark Deity when I can play Fire Emblem? I think this question is something that affects uh, this game. Uh, six hours into it, it feels like it wants to be Fire Emblem, but lacking the ability to be it. Uh, if it was my goal, uh, to make a game reminiscent of the older Fire Emblem games, I would personally approach it uh, in finding uh, finding out the pain points and areas of improvement the series could have. Um, and I think this is kind of the crux of things. Um, 
it's great that uh, there are more developers out there wanting to make uh, all kinds of games. But to, at least from my perspective, uh, to approach it in a sense of like, I want to make a Fire Emblem game and then your game is effectively Fire Emblem, but it's not the same quality of Fire Emblem. It's not um, the same uh, everything else Fire Emblem, you know? It just looks like Fire Emblem and it plays kind of similar to Fire Emblem. Um, it You get presented with like, yeah, I could play Dark Deity and, you know, it does some stuff. Or I could play Fire Emblem that does all the things that Dark Deity does, but better. Um, like, you you force yourself into that corner. And I, I personally feel like it's a much better approach to just be like, hey, you know, Fire Emblem does like these, these couple of things that are really cool. Um, what if we added them into our game, but with some twists or uh, some, some changes? Maybe we don't like the way that Fire Emblem did it this way. So let's do it, you know, a completely different way. Um, I feel like that would be the, the better approach. And personally, I feel like uh, taking, this is going to sound so disrespectful, taking the, the style of Fire Emblem in terms of looks, I, I feel is, is, is not setting yourself up for success when it comes to setting yourself apart. Um, when your sprites, uh, your your uh, your game like general gameplay style like when when all the big and flashy things are just fire emblem knockoffs air quotes uh, it it doesn't it doesn't come across well from my point of view um, I've had uh, many a discussions with uh, heels um, about like how there's there's a really big problem with Pokemon games out there um, where there are so many developers that uh, see the Pokemon franchise and they're like, I want to make a Pokemon game. And their game is basically Pokemon, but they don't fix anything that Pokemon... Uh, makes obnoxious or annoying or uh, you know takes a bunch of time or uh, improves upon uh, any of the things that could be improved upon like they just see the formula of Pokemon and they just carbon copy it into their game because they feel like that's what the player wants um, but from my point of view if I want to play Fire Emblem, I'm going to go play Fire Emblem. I, I'm not going to play Dark Deity so that I can get my fix on Fire Emblem. Um, I would much rather Dark Deity have its own identity. And I, I don't think Dark Deity accomplishes that. Um, so, in turn, is the game worth recommending? I... I feel like this is one of those scenarios where it's like, you know, if if you have a, a crazy fix to play a tactics game, um, Dark DD could be one of those options. Uh, I don't think it's very high up on the list of tactics games that I would recommend to somebody. I don't think it sets itself apart from what it's trying to be, which is Fire Emblem, in my opinion. Um, so, like, truthfully, between a lot of the issues that I ran into, a lot of the um, story, uh, uh, like, I, I want to say inconsistencies, but that doesn't feel correct to me. But, like, uh, the, the story 
uh, progression and character motivations and reasonings and things like that. Um, I, I just don't see myself recommending this game uh, to anyone. Um, I, there's, I, I could probably name, uh, if I looked at my list and all the tactics games that I have, I could probably name five other tactics games, uh, to, to go ahead of this one. And tactics games are generally not short games. So, you know, you could probably spend some time with them. Um, and I guess to close that out do i want a sequel to this uh that's where things get interesting um a lot of my frustrations with this come with um the the story's approach it comes with uh some of the rough around the the edgesness that the game has and and overall just like not having its own unique identity in the space and I think a sequel is a great place to uh, look at what you have and be like hey you know this is our chance to separate ourselves from the pack unfortunately uh, it, a sequel is also one of those things where you could do something that I really uh, prefer, and that's more of the same. And uh, this is just one of those examples of I don't want more of the same. I want this. I want Dark Deity to reinvent itself. Um, and I think the likelihood of that is very, very small. Um, I haven't seen anything about Dark Deity other than it has been announced. Uh, but um, I think where it comes, where it goes for me is that I wouldn't take the leap into Dark Deity 2. I would probably do extensive amounts of research I'd probably watch streams of other people playing it to see if any of my issues with the first game have been addressed. And if I like what I see, then maybe I'll add it to the wish list. Maybe I'll get it uh, down the road. Maybe I'll get it on sale. Uh, you know, what have you. But it wouldn't be a quick purchase for me. Um, it it would probably take some time. Um, and as as rough as this is to say um the the amount of uh bugs that i ran into with this experience and the fact that again like this game has been out for you know a decent amount of time um there's the possibility that the next game could replicate uh a similar experience and um, waiting as long as possible to play the game would be in my best interest um, in that regard as well. So, uh, to just recap my overall thoughts, you know, I, the game's I. Um, it's, it's certainly not going to win any awards uh, from me, but I don't regret playing it. Um, there was definitely fun to be had. Um, uh, it introduced Faust and Faust was a great character. Uh, there were, uh, Garrick was also a great character, you know, like I, uh, I definitely had enjoyable moments in this game. Um, and I, there's no regret whatsoever from playing it, but that's going to wrap it up for me in this afternoon slash night stream. Um, I'll be back Monday, 7 a.m. Pacific, to play something. We'll, uh, we'll get around to that. Uh, let me see if... Aw. Man, see? Like, nobody streams in the morning, so... Like, I just stopped looking to, to raid people. And now here we are in, in the nighttime, and nobody is streaming. Sokka-foo. 
Sinesis was streaming earlier, and, you know, life is hard, but guess I'm not raiding anybody. Uh, so, yeah. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. See ya the next time I see ya. Peace.